Hello and welcome to Microsoft Hates Greg. Okay, today should be, I think today's gonna be a pretty fun one. Uh, we're gonna to, we've been, the last few videos, nine videos or so, we've been taking a look at Microsoft's quick measures and kind of better ways of doing them. And today we have hit upon a rolling average. So something as simple as a rolling average, right? There's no way to screw that one up. Well, let's get into it. So I, over here, I've got my, I've got my table, my fact table called table. Uh, the important uh, column in there is the value. That's my uh, fact that I'm reporting on, right? I've got my dates table, which is connected to my uh, fact table in a star schema arrangement, so that you know, on date. And then I've got auto time intelligence turned on because as we'll see in this video, you sort of have to for this one. <laughs> you, know, you can't even use a, a, a date table on this uh, this quick measure. Okay, so the way we create this quick measure is we come in here and we say new quick measure and scroll down here to the time intelligence. And again, I did last one was year over year change. I'm not going to cover quarter over quarter change or month over month change. Maybe I'll do it at the end of the series or something. Uh, but there were, you know, these are pretty much identical to year over year change. So no sense, uh, no sense just, uh, you know, beating a dead horse on that. So, all right, so rolling average. Ticket, and we have quite a few things that we need to fill in here. So I can put my value in my base value. Now, if I try to put date in, now read this very carefully. Only Power BI provided date hierarchies are supported. Now that's different than the errors we were getting before, where it said, you know, it basically indicated that you it could also be marked as a date table. This one, you specifically, and I tried it, trust me, um, you can mark it as a date table all day long and it's not gonna work. Um, you're gonna get the same error. So you have to use a date hierarchy. We can pull that in from our dates table. Now we can pick uh, periods here, days, month, years, and I think I did uh, months in here, and then periods before. I did two different versions of this. We're only gonna focus on the one where I did like, hey, I wanna see, you know, I wanna do a rolling average of the last three months, okay? You know, pretty typical kind of a financial thing. A lot of people track that sort of stuff, that kind of KPI. Okay, so that's how I created it. And click OK, right? And you get uh, I the, the click on this. You get this. It's this. Hey, I want a simple rolling average. Okay, here's how you do a simple rolling average, I guess. Holy smokes, where to begin? Um, so right. So let's just. I'm not going to try to unwind all of this. Uh, what's going on here? But you mean heck, man? You got a calculate table in there. You've got to calculate. You know, you've got the your summarize and average X, you got these dates between. I mean, so if you count up all the functions in here, we got if is filtered, error, end of month, dates between, start of month, date add, average X, calculate table, summarize, values, calculate sum all. You got 14 functions, 14 DAX functions. Just to compute a rolling average, man. That's that's a bit overkill, in my opinion. All right, and we're going to revisit that topic here a little bit. Um, but, you know, again, I'm not going to try to unwind all of this. That's using your date hierarchy, obviously. The whole summarize, man, that is overkill. It's like you could summarize by just date month, man. It's all, it's all you need. But sure, you know, summarize by everything, the kitchen sink. So, I mean, you know, and I, I don't mean to criticize. I, it's going to come across like I'm really criticizing Microsoft. And I... I sort of get it from Microsoft's perspective, right? They're creating, you know, they don't know your data model, right? So, so they don't know if you have a month column or a year column, right? But if they if they if they base this around a hierarchy that they've created through auto time intelligence, which again, every best practice out there says don't use auto time intelligence, right? It just over it just bloats your data model, um, and it's just unnecessary. And just to show that I'm not, you know, always a contrarian, just being a contrarian for contrarian's sake, I also agree that auto time intelligence is a bad idea, right? So there are certain things, you know, like, yes, I, I've done the DAX counterculture and and uh, and said, don't use calculate. And I'm not just being a contrarian to, just to be a contrarian, okay? There are certain things that I do agree with, um, and that being one of them. And, you know, so they force you down this path of auto time intelligence and using these, these this date hierarchy. It makes sense, you know, I guess, from their perspective because they know that they okay we know we have a year out you know in a quarter and we know we have these columns 
you know, versus maybe the way I would have designed it if I was in this situation is you go to here and come down here to rolling average. Just, okay, period is days. Why not just have an extra field here that says, hey, this is my period column. <laughs> and then you could avoid all of this and you wouldn't have to force, you know, you down the path of the auto time intelligence and auto date hierarchy and all of that kind of stuff. All right. So anyway, you know, does it work, right? Okay. Yeah, we get, we get values. We got this, we're pulling in from our month. You know, we know it's not going to work if we put it pull month in here and I can show it doesn't work. You know, you get weird results. <laughs> it's, if I use month from over here, I get it, you know, get weird results. So you have to use the month over, you know, from over here. Okay. From your actual auto date hierarchy. Okay, it's just requirement. All right, so maybe a better way of doing it, right? And this is going to look very similar to all the stuff we've done in the past, right? I'm going to grab my my end date is my max of the date in context. Now I can use EO month to just dial it back three months, okay? But that's at the end of that month, all right? So then I have to figure out my start date from that date by just using a date function year of three months ago, month of three months ago, and one, because months start on one. All right, then I'm, of course, going to create my table bar, which we do in all of ours, you know, all of the past videos we've been doing. Uh, and that's just a simple summarize where I filter all the table between those two dates by month, and I sum up my value, and then I do an average X across it. And same answers. Same answers. My opinion, far simpler, right? Um, now, you know, we do have one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten functions here, right? Okay, so you may not think, you know, that's a big difference between ten functions and fourteen functions. What is that? That's a uh, like twenty-eight point five seven percent reduction. Um, but you know, okay, so thirty percent reduction in number of formulas. But, but let's think about this from a Excel user's perspective. Okay. How many functions here is an Excel user already already not already familiar with, right? They the only ones that there's a max function in Excel, there's an end of month function in Excel, date, year, and month functions in Excel. Summarize they won't be familiar with. There is a filter function in Excel, works pretty similar to uh, the DAX one. They won't be familiar with all. They will be familiar with some, and they won't be familiar with average X. So three, three whole functions that they are not going to know versus they're not going to know about is filtered they won't know about error end of month dates between start of month date add calculate table average x summarize values calculate 11 11 functions that they won't know about so that's talking about you're talking about a 72 73 percent reduction Right in the number of formula functions that they would an Excel user would be familiar with versus not. Right, so that's talking about that's an over seventy percent you know reduction in the learning curve is the way I look at it. Okay, and, and then if you throw in the fact that they don't have to know you know learn about calculate and then therefore have to learn about star schemas and they don't have to learn all these crazy time intelligence functions, you're probably talking about a ninety percent reduction in the learning curve by doing it this way versus this way okay and if you've noticed again and i think this is an important thing this is a very important thing to point out you notice that you know, like in the last like you know nine videos or so the microsoft's function you know calculations have been very extremely different from one another like in one case you're just using a single total ytd function right other cases you know you get what you got here i mean they're they're, they're wildly different in terms of their approach and their their structure um, versus if you've noticed in the last videos that we've been, that I've put together on this, all of the better versions of these functions have all followed these just minor differences in the pattern, right? It's still, okay, we create our little vars up there, you know, to get a uh, little information that we need. We construct a table, you know, variable using those vars that we've calculated and we do an exaggregator across it and poof, it works, right? And I think there's a huge amount of value, in, especially for newcomers to DAX, to, hey, you know, here is a pattern that you can use. It's simple, uses uh, functions that you're already familiar with, 
and you can use it again and again to solve you know, 80, 90 percent of the problems you're ever going to run into in DAX. I think that is hugely valuable and something that is missing uh, when we're talking about teaching people DAX. You know, I maybe I won't go so far as to say that DAX is easy. I think but people make DAX way more complicated than it needs to be. And it's because of the stupidest insistence on using calculate, calculate table and like time intelligence functions, right? You know, you don't, you know, you're just overly complicating your life. And there's one thing I don't believe in is overcomplicating my life. I, t- I try to avoid it, right? So I think people make DAX harder than it actually really is. I think DAX is pretty straightforward and pretty easy. Once you get past the, you know, kind of the context thing, um, and then you start throwing calculated into the mix and then it becomes hard, right? That's when it becomes hard. That's when the context conversations and everything else start to become, oh my God, what is calculate doing internally with this? Um, so, I mean, does this does this function work with, hey, we're using the date hierarchy. Does it work with month? Yep, works with month, it's the same. Does it work with month from table? Yep, it works with month from table. It works for any of these, again, Easy, easier. You don't have to worry and say, you, you know, well, if you construct your measure this way, well, then it's going to be, you know, this, you know, you have to use this month versus if you construct it this way, then you have to use this month. If you construct it this other way, you might have to use month from t- it, it. You're just complicating your lives, people. That's all I have to say about it. Um, learn this approach. This approach will make your life easier, um, especially if you're coming from Excel where you have to learn, you know, three new functions versus 11 uh, for just a simple rolling average, right? It's crazy. So that is all for today. Uh, We will continue on this series, and I hope you guys are enjoying it, um, and I will see you next time.